Hello folks and welcome to um, what I suppose is part two of learning to draw from your imagination. And uh, in case I have not shown you this before, what I like to do with every drawing that I do is get my paper and put it along like a straight edge like this, a tabletop, whatever it is, and grab a pencil. And I use my middle finger and I ride against that table and I just do a real simple line here, real light, real light. And I just spin my paper, go all the way around, all four sides. That's what most pages have. And just do that line. Again, riding with my fingers on the side of the tabletop, which is in this case is just a handy canvas I had laying nearby, and make those lines. The reason I do that is it forces you to take your drawing a little bit more seriously. And we can picture, sure. It forces you to take your draw a little bit more seriously, and then, um, you know, it tends to have you, it tends to inspire you to make a more finished type of drawing. So the next thing I do with that is I'll take my, my pencil and I'll go over that and emphasize the line, attempting to not make it so precise. I do not want a straight line because I ask you, what is more interesting, this, this straight line or one that sort of wobbles along and adds interest and character to your drawing? So there you go. The answer is obvious that this sort of imperfect line is more interesting to look at than one drawn with a ruler. My students are frequently teasing me because I always tell them you never use a ruler. And again, when I say never or always, you have to kind of grade on a curve, you know, because it's not always true. All right, up oh, there, I just used it. So I think the best way to do this is maybe just uh, leave it like that. Even though I've got, you know, these, these margins out here that they don't have anything in them. At least I want to show the whole drawing this way. So we'll put we'll put a pencil there. There you go. We'll put a marker there to make it that side more interesting. Over here, I've got a bunch of colored pencils. So what I'm gonna do is um, today, let's see, I got three recent sketches here. Um, I think I did this one uh, about a week ago. Also, this one about a week ago. You saw both of these in Learning to Draw from Your Imagination, Part 1. And then I just did this one a couple of hours ago. So I'm going to kind of combine all three. And once again, these are all things that I've just sat down in the middle of class and made up as I go. So... I want to encourage you, obviously, to draw for your imagination because you, you make better paintings. Obviously, if you're drawing a person or a specific place or, you know, an iris or something, you, you probably want to use some kind of reference material. But when I do landscapes, I tend to just want to um, just sit there and, and let it flow. So the first thing I usually do is take a a gray pencil or tan or something that's not really going to show up. It'll, it'll kind of disappear in the drawing. And, and you know, in this case, I, I'm saying draw for your imagination, but I'm looking at a drawing. You know, I'm not going to copy it, but this is a drawing, as I said before, that just is sort of out of my mind. So I'm going to put all of those aside. I'm going to rely on my instincts, and I'm just going to make a what I'll call a continuous line drawing representing some trees or areas or, or sky or ground or whatever, and just, you know, just kind of block something out like that. Maybe a few clouds. You know, I hope, hope this is showing up. It's, it's showing up all right, pretty pale. So I'm gonna emphasize that a little bit. It'll, it'll disappear anyway. So you, I use this little wiggly line as I go. You can see. All right, and I left a little clearing here for for a little bit of interest. Um, perhaps I'm gonna put, maybe this will be a winter scene. So I'm gonna try to put a tree in here like that. And perhaps one about a third of the way in here like this. It's not too big. I'll do some of these arching things because these are gonna be like a like an old oak tree or something. Put a few 
limbs in, something like that, you know, and then have a little bit of a ponder whether it's where you want to go with it or not. I think I'm going to do a little bit of up front brush here, maybe left and right. And these tricks, these little darkening the corners here and here, and maybe even darkening the sky up here when you're done later, are little tricks that make, they focus the viewer's interest towards the center of the painting. All right, so what am I gonna do now? As usual, I don't know because I don't have anything in mind yet. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of a brown pencil. And, and I'm using Derwent colored pencils or Derwent watercolor pencil. Um, maybe I'm in the camera lens. I don't know, in the field of view. Um, because I like, I, I prefer to use pencils that are either called watercolor pencils or say that they have a soft lead because sometimes when you buy those inexpensive colored pencils, they're very hard leads and it takes too much effort to get color onto the paper. And you know, our hands are getting older, might have a little arthritis or strength issues. And so I like, I like a pencil that's gonna give me something that's gonna leave something behind in the paper when I'm working it. All right, so I've got some kind of a, idea. Not really. But, I, you know, that doesn't stop me. I'm just going to take some blue. The idea is not to sit and think, oh, what do I do now? And what do I do now? And what do I do next? And oh my goodness. Oh, I just don't know what's going on. Of course you don't know what's going on. You're drawing from your imagination. Just let instinct take over. If you've spent a lot of time in the woods and streams and, you know, the What's the Australians call it? The, the, brush, the bush, as I did when I was young in various parts of the Patapsco River Valley in which I, I still live. Uh, you, you tend to have memories of all these visuals and trees and, and streams and valleys and all that. And you can just borrow from that if you're lucky and do something with it. I found a purple over here, so I'm gonna put some of that in here. All I'm doing right now is I am using color, but I'm trying to establish some values. Things in the distance. Uh, even though, you know, these trees might be a little further away, you know, some of them are going to show trunks. Maybe a little stronger here. You know, in the lower part where, you know, when the leaves are, when the trees are closer to the ground, you know, the leaves fall away because they're not getting as much light. So that's how I, I do that. And I might as well put a few strong ones in here for this bushy parts in the foreground. Well, I've got the purple, I can darken up that trunk. All right, so then I say, I'm gonna ask myself this and that, but I'm not gonna ask myself anything except where's my dark green pencil? I don't have one. I'll have to fake it. So I'll just, um, I'll choose this area that's off in the distance and I'm going to start coloring it with green using a somewhat of a directional, directional. I did say winter scene, didn't I? Oh, well, it's off to somewhere else. And this is, like I said, no rules. Just make it up as I go. So we're going to start doing that, that middle color. Fill in. Remember those, those trees off in the background. And I'm using the side of the pencil like this because as you've seen me profess before, using the side of that pencil tends to put, lay out a little bit more color down on the paper. It takes less time if you're drawing with that little sharp point. You got all these little bits here and it just takes too long. So see how I'm holding the pencil real loose. Laying color down with the side of the pencil even into that purple area, maybe even up into some into this tree to get that established. And, and of course over here too. Now let's go in with some blue. See, I'm gonna, again, blue being um, a, a color that in this case, it, it, it gives a little bit of atmospheric distance to these, these uh, trees off in the distance. 
makes the color recede a little bit because that yellow green is very strong. And since I couldn't find my, my dark green, I guess I'll wander off looking for it later. Now the dead time in the camera, you just have to amuse yourself and talk amongst yourself and tell jokes until I get back. All right, so something like that. I'm gonna focus on this tree now. You know, as I said before about this one, well, I'll focus on this one. See, I just changed my mind. And I'm gonna go back and forth with this sort of meandering zigzag line, representing the way that leaves kind of cascade from the main trunk and branches. And you get that um, directional energy. See how quickly I can establish the concept of a, of a large tree up front here. And of course, at the bottom, you have less and less leaves, but you know, I'll put them in there. Just keep doing it. And this is where, you know, I'm always saying, you know, you're gonna, you're, you're drawing your eye, you're looking at the drawing with your eyes. Eyes are sending the image to your brain. Brain is processing what it sees and your brain is telling your hand what to do next. It's an amazing process. You have to become aware of it, know about it, you know, and you see it makes sense. You get that feedback about what you're doing and you act accordingly. All right, so I'm gonna color this area in too. I don't know how long this is gonna take, folks. I'm hurrying, I know, you you all got dinner or, you know, pizza or something going on you gotta get to, so just, you know, hang in there. And while I got this color out, well, not blue, while I got this bright green out, I'm gonna put some stuff some color in down here and I'm not really paying attention to my direction I'm just trying to fill in see how I did that yeah very simple and I might as well just since this is going to be apparently not a winter scene any longer I'm going to go back and forth and use an upward pencil stroke try to establish a little bit of grass here I'm not really trying to draw grass so much as using the vertical stroke suggests the texture of grass. And you know, I don't try to do this whole thing like this. I go back and forth because the way this will go is if I do it darker here and then lighter and then maybe darker over here and one around a little bit, it starts giving that feeling of maybe a meadow, you know, because grass is not, unless you mow it, it's not just one big beautiful green patch. It's so all these varieties of green and browns and flowers and so forth. So I'm doing something like that. Now I'm doing a little bit larger. And I might come in later. Obviously just a little yellow here and there in different areas. You see how I try to establish the concept that it's a meadow. And then where's my brown? Actually it's more of a yellow brown, more like a yellow ochre. And go back and forth. See these little textural things? Just add something. While I get the color out, I'm going to put a little color in these foreground, this foreground brush. And again, all over the place, not any particular direction. Okay, so let's let's uh, let's go look for our. What do we need? Dark green. Okay. And what do I say off camera? I'm off camera, so just uh, you know, don't worry about it. Uh, here, here we go. Here's a couple. This will work, and here's, I got a dark green and an ugly green, so we'll use both of them. I like this sort of ugly green. Gives a little, little um, textural interest off in the background. Sort of a wiggly, swirly, circling oval, back and forth, scribbly line. Just trying to get a dark mass here so that this particular tree moves forward a little bit. And we're just gonna do the same thing with this, with this color. See, I'm building up, building up colors, texture. And I don't necessarily cover every single area with this color where I may have done the blue before, because you see this little wavered blue here? That makes it look like it's a bit of foliage a little further away. Might make a few darker. You know, little shadow colors, especially where I get closer to the bottom where you're going to have less light. Press on that 
pencil a little stronger. Get some stronger color going on down here. And even, you know, let's say again, moving down to this foreground area. You gotta just be patient, build up the color. All right. I think this may, over here, what are we gonna do? This may end up being a sort of a wayward, partially, <coughs> excuse me, partially dead tree. And or not, I may come back and put some leafy material on it later. I don't know yet. Right now, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants, as the saying goes. Okay, so let's see. Do we have some pink? Sure, we got pink. Why not put a little pink in that, in that background? If for no other reason because I haven't used it yet. But specifically, I wanna use this in this area where I'm suggesting that the, the greenery is much further off in the distance. You see how that becomes a sort of a far away, far away color. And then I wanna have it peeking through here and there as if the bits of forest that are further away are peeking through the underbrush. All right, so let's see. We got our, our brown. And what I'm gonna do is come in here, strengthen up this trunk, come in and give it some interest. And what I'm looking for is areas where, where it's dark, where the green might be dark, that's where the shadow is and that's where these these um, tr uh, limbs would be peeking through. So we look, we look around. They show up in the dark and they show up in the areas, what I'll call the windows, in between the greens where I've left these little white spaces. That will be sky later, you see? So you just kind of wander around, see where it makes sense. Might take a little blue now because trees aren't necessarily brown. Take a little blue in there against the ground and make that like a darker, darker gray here and there, especially on the bottom. Up here, I don't matter as much because the concept is there's more light up here. And then let's see, we need a couple of sticks growing out of here around the trunk where somebody didn't mow. Put a few limbs in over here. What else we got? What else are we gonna do? Take some. I'll take some gray to this tree. I'm trying to make it have some, make it more interesting, give it lots more of this minutia of twig, twigs little broken up stuff all over the place through the tree. I think I had some, I uh, actually have some black here, which I rarely use, but in this case, I'm going to just to strengthen up some of these, these darks, make some of these trunks more pronounced. Could even come here with some blue if you wanted a few that look like they're a little, little further away. All right, let's, what haven't we used? We haven't used orange and we haven't used that blue. Well, we might have used that blue. We have not used yellow much. We got a pink. These are gonna be our sky colors. I'm just organizing my colors. And um, let's see, what, what do I need to do? I need to make this area more believable and I'm kind of changing the shape a little bit. I'm gonna draw some of these little windows where I plan to have the sky peek through and I'm gonna put some blue down here to make these look like their forest is a little little closer, but you know, not, not as close as this. I want it to recede. I want it to kind of go off in the distance. Disappear into the, into the foreground here and 
back here where it's behind that tree. Do some of that zigzag spiraling oval squiggly line to give it some some textural element. Also over here, treating this area like it's like it's further away. Okay. Where does that leave us? It leaves us needing to make the foreground a little darker. So I'm just going to use this, what I call this ugly green color, which is called olive. Olive green. And I'm just going to use that like a darkening agent all across with that vertical zigzag line. And I'm going to come back, put some wayward whatevers. Twigs, trees that haven't become trees yet. Dried this and that. Always trying to bend a few over. Makes it more believable. Also, I think I have this dark green here somewhere. Yeah. And I'm going to use some of that there too. Making these foreground areas stronger. See how that works? Very nice. It's almost like you know what you're doing, eh? All right, so we're getting there. At this point, I might actually pause, think. And okay, I thought enough. I still don't know what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the overall, what, what would you call it, the, the overall tone of the picture. And what that means is I'm going to work on the sky, but all the light coming out of the sky is going to permeate everything. So I've got my basic drawing in here. So I'm going to start putting in some, again, using, look how I'm holding a pencil so I can get a firm bit of pressure on the point or the side so I can lay in a lot of color easily. See this arching effect that I'm using? This is also another trick to um, keep the viewer's interest within the picture. Also, as I come down, I am easing up on the pressure so as to get a lighter, lighter blue color. And then as I come back up, increase the pressure again, trying to make the color stronger. All right. Let's see, is this a slightly stronger blue? Yes, it is. So this is one of those um, wood core pencils that you get. I think Michaels has these and it's color all the way through. I really like these. I'm not sure about the quality or the materials as far as the, the color fastness of the, of the uh, material or color fastness of the, of the pigment. But I'm using them because this is just a demonstration drawing. This is nothing I'll worry about or have for sale or or uh, you'd be concerned about its color fastness. If it fades, it fades. It's, you know, it's we're all dust anyway, and so is everything. Everything we do. All right, enough philosophy. But it, when I try to do some, some serious work, I will be more aware and more concerned about the color fastness of the materials because I want my serious work to last a little while anyway. You see, I keep getting this little dark spot here. That's probably because I got a piece of lint or something underneath my paper. So, you know, you always got to try to clean your, your work area before you get into trouble. All right, so I've got that. So now I'm going to take some pink. Trying to get a little light effect. See, that pink kind of works with the blue tends to shift it towards a, a purple color. See that? Again, using the side, and again, this is one of those color core pencils, color pencils. A little harder to get the color off of these. You really gotta bear down on them. You gotta work them. But you can see it's, it's coming through. 
All right, so having done that, then, believe it or not, coming in here with some orange. And what that orange is gonna do is it's gonna kind of turn some of the blue green and some of the pink, pink orange. And in general, just add more of a light effect. All right, so what did I use? I used the blue, pink, orange. All right, so I'm gonna take those colors and I'm also gonna push those colors. You see how that light is escaping the sky and coming down, peeking right through these trees? All of these, they're all pink. See that? All the way down to here, all the way up into here, all these in the background. even down into the lower part of the foreground, perhaps. Even all of this, you see it creates almost earth color. And that's what those greens that, the red and the pink, the pigment blends with that green and makes, grays it out, makes it duller, makes it more natural looking. All right, having done that, then I'm gonna take this yellow and I'm really gonna come in here really strong. See how that works? Give myself some sunlight. And I'm really pressing on it here. But as I go up, I'm gonna ease off. You know, bring the color up, but I wanna back off of it a little bit. Into the trees. See how that sunlight works? Permeates everything. Goes into that pink, makes it orange. And then of course, where the field is here, I'm gonna put a lot of yellow here because you'll think that that, I'm gonna put it real strong here and then outwardly fade it, you know, cause we're getting a lot of light here. And then, you know, here and there, maybe off in the distance, we wanna see it filtering through. All right, so we've got this yellow here. So that yellow is peeking through. So, you know, in, in between these leaves. So you gotta go back in here and look for these windows where the sunlight may, might be coming through. Strengthen it up a little bit here and there. You don't want these flat tree cut to look like a cutout. You want, you want that light filtering through. Remember I had those little openings before and so forth. So, all right. So now, I realize that it's still a very light picture. So a couple of things I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and decide to do some, some greenery on this tree over here. So a little multiple groupings of, of strokes of the pencil, some larger, some connected, some not. This tree may be older, it may have lost some of its greenery. It could be falls coming, I don't know. It's not as dense as some of these others. And of course you see more detail because it's closer. So, I might do an overall scribble because some of the greenery is not as visible. It's like maybe off in the background a little bit. Might even take a little blue, strengthen up some of these ones on the dark side away from the sunlight where the light would not be coming through. All right. And then what? And then I look at this and I think, wow, this really could be stronger. This colors could be stronger. So I'm just gonna get in there, work on that background a little bit. See how that works? And again, even with this color, with these trees off in the background here, I'll do this first. But um, you're, you're gonna have some of that color peeking through windows in this tree that's a little closer up. So after you do that, you wanna come in here and do that little window thing again. Suggest all of these. All right, what else can we do? I think um, I don't have any red. Let's get some red. That'll be That'll be absolutely ridiculous, so that's exactly why we should do it. Got a couple of reds here. And that'll do us. 
so what is this color here? That's not red. Well, it's, what is that? It's terracotta. Oh, it is terracotta. And this one's called Crimson Lake. That must be it. So I think I'll come in here with a little red. Get that sort of dark sky at the end of the day. You know how that sun, once it gets going down there, leaves a little red. So I'm bringing that up here a little bit. It's like the pink, only it's, you know, darker. Here and there. Even more. And more. done that I got to go back here where I had these yellows and tuck in that red color because you know it's peeking through everywhere even here look remember where I said we had to have this color peeking through well now it's red and in that mountain now it's red and over here and then again on the bottom might do some of that all right so let's say Let's say there's a sun, all right? And what happens frequently with the sun at this stage is it, it might partially disappear. Although it looks like increasingly I'm doing the whole darn thing. This pencil was screwy. So, you know, you just kind of continue I had to introduce red, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Trying to get that color. Tone that down a little bit. Nope, not with that. With, with yellow. There we go. Tend to make it disappear a little bit. See how strong I'm using this color now? And I'm going to continue, continue, continue. Again, remember how I keep saying that light is permeates everything so it comes into these trees see how that color works and in here and uh, I think since I've added red I need to make some of my meadow here have some orange color in it so in fact um, I'm going to darken up left and right like that and lower a lot see how I make that disappear as I go up light here darker heavier as it comes down even into all this rush work down here and formerly pink mountain range or group of trees in the distance is no longer pink, it's now the orange. Although I think that's too much, so I'm gonna go back with the blue. So you can just keep changing things. Adding the blue makes it a little bit greener. And then I'm gonna, let's see, where's my dark green, I think. Is that it? Yes, it is. I'm gonna come back and darken up the value of some of these, some of these middle area trees. Make them appear closer. I'll serve my brush. Dog barking in the distance must mean it's time for her dinner. That one and this one in a big way. We're gonna really strengthen this one up. We want some contrast. We don't want everything to be that pale middle value. See, so see, I don't know, probably been a little over half an hour. You see how quickly you can put a concept together and perhaps in preparation for doing a, a painting later in acrylic, watercolor, oils, 
whatever you want to use. This is a quick way of mocking up ideas, testing to see if you like the composition you had in mind, etc. Still darkening here and there and trying to make things um, disappear a little bit left and right. So uh, let's see, didn't we have a purple here somewhere? Yes, imperial purple. All right, so we're gonna use that to try to push some of these trees into the darkness. So where I had this trunk before, you know, it stood out a lot. And then as I worked, it tends to disappear a little bit. I don't want it to stand out like a sore thumb, but I also don't want it to completely disappear. So you gotta pay attention to what you're doing. See what you might need to adjust so that things come out the way that you would like them to. All right, that's more or less getting there. Gonna say I might strengthen up these these bits down here, these uh, branches, and then I might also come in with dark green and do some some looser leaf work here. Build up that texture, build up that interest, darken everything down here. So I'm using kind of individual, very heavy, I was going to say brush strokes. I'm so used to working with a brush. Heavy pencil strokes, you see? Directional. I'm pulling some of these um, leaf shapes towards, like here, towards the direction of the, of the branch. You see that? How that works? Where I just scribbled in before, but now I do these detailing and now it tends to make sense. Also, uh, in a forest, any forest, you're probably going to have this low leaf, ev low line evergreen like this. So you can put them here and there and have them come into the foreground even a little bit. Little zigzags, little nothings here and there. You know, any anytime you can do just a little bit of something, give a little contrast, a little textural interest, maybe some brush around this base of this tree because once again, this doesn't get mowed. And I think I have, uh, to have um, what do I got? Black. Use some black and maybe put in a few more branches off in the distance to suggest that this is not just a big flat green area. You know, we want to have some, some trunk and branch activity. Again, using directional strokes of the pencil to give the illusion that, you know, whatever leafy pattern is there, whatever foliage is there, it's following some sort of predetermined pattern. All right, so we do something like that. I probably should put a little, is that my red? No. Where's the red one? If red has rolled away, maybe that's a good thing. All right, so I use orange, close enough. I just want to strengthen up where the light is coming in down here from the sunlight. Okay, so we want to get, lastly, a little pink, a couple of the blues, my imperial violet. Darn, where's that red? I need that red. Maybe not so much as I think. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Oh well, I'm gonna put in just a few suggestions of clouds off in the distance. Again, using a scribbly, <clears throat> scribbly shape. You know these these things tend to these these bits of moisture that we call clouds tend to kind of break up a little bit, leave pieces here and there as they get blown across the sky. Another thing I like to do again. You know, I, I colored the, the sky like this with an arch, but I tend to do some clouds like this because I think that this is more like the, the, the way I see things in perspective when looking at the sky. So I do a little bit of a, a reverse arcing. I 
hope you, I think you understand what I mean. And then as we, we get further off in the distance, they get much smaller. And I really want to put some, blot out the sun a little bit. See, see how much better that is. Some are small, so I'm going to do one last pass at it. Some small ones here and there. And then as I get further up in the sky, I'm going to make them broader. Blend it a little bit here and there. And don't forget those broken, broken. There, I got rid of that lint spot there. Just put a cloud there. That's how you fix mistakes. Just put a cloud there. All right, so I've got some clouds. And I'm going to some blue in these upper to make that a blue violet hit all of those with that and then I guess the last thing I'm going to do unless I come up with some other plan is hit the bottoms of these with that orange I know people love to paint sunsets I'll tell you it is nearly impossible to capture a sunset. I find that I have more luck just drawing it or painting it without looking at the sky. You know, you get too involved in it. The colors are moving, the clouds are moving, everything is changing, it's all just too much and it's overwhelming. But you can kind of fake it like that by just doing it at home, painting from your, or drawing from your memory your imagination. See how that, that works? You have to be careful with too much yellow because with that with that blue, blending with the blue, it might make them look a little bit on the uh, green side. So I guess lastly, I'm still going to come in with pink because I can't find my red. It's probably just as well because it's a terrible color. Too aggressive. It's everything you put it on tends to want to come forward like it did with this sunlight or the, the sun the sphere itself. So I suppress some of these with a little bit of pink, which is gonna push any of, that, any of that area where it tended to shift towards green, it's gonna shift it back towards purple. All right, so I'm gonna let that go. Hopefully you've learned something from this process. Don't forget to sign and date your work. Also, maybe at the end with this, I might look at an overall color like, like the dark green that I used, if I can find it, if it hasn't joined the red. There we go. And uh, re-emphasize this, this line. Come around, you know, using a, a color that kind of is dominant in your drawing. And it makes everything just look nice all together. It's almost like you planned it. Continue to make an attempt to keep that line interesting. All right, that's it. Bye for now. See you um, next time, whatever that's going to be. Okay, bye. Thanks for watching.